Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. We're going to be heading back to the world of Thra uh, for another go at the Dark Crystal, the 1983 uh, video game adaptation of the, the film of the same name. It was, um, it was an early Sierra game designed by Roberta Williams um, and is a um, one of those early graphical adventure games that goes screen by screen um, and you don't you don't move a character around you just uh, navigate with a text parser so we're going to get that loading up in the background while we have a little chat I hope you're all doing well I um, I hope everything is looking and sounding all right um, if you're watching along do let me know if the sound levels are all right Obviously, there's not much to look at at the moment, but when, when we get the, the game up, uh, let me know how that's looking as well, please. Um, and we will go from there. I got a little bit stuck last time, but I'm, I've got a plan for today. So when we're loaded up, I will, yeah, I will start us off. Ah, here we go. The Apple II has loaded up. Let's make sure we've got the right discs in the right way around. And then we can get going. Apologies if you hear a sudden beep. Okay, let me get the right thing visible for us all. This thing. Here we go. So let's do it quick disk change, uh, like so. There we go. Fab, so um, where we're going to start is right from the beginning, um, for a couple of important reasons, uh, which I'll explain as I go along. So let's have a look at the valley. So we're guiding gender the Gelfling on his adventure. So before Jen can act, a mystic approaches and says, Ursu, wisest of our race, is dying. He is sent for you, come quickly. Then the mystic walks away. Which way does the mystic go? Can you find the mystic? As I found out uh, to my detriment before, um, but you can't just find the mystic. You have to puzzle out where he might have gone. I'm going to bring up the new map. Boop. Uh, so, uh, luckily I've charted this, this whole area on our first stream. Uh, so I can work out where to go. I'm going to go straight to Ursu first of all. Um, just need to go west to do that. Um, and then we'll have a look at other bits that we need to do in this area. So if this is your first uh, first time seeing the game, there are many beautiful um, screens that we're going to wander through. So we have to go through this uh, this cave opening. Oh, this one's still really good. And then we'll get to see Atsu. So we're going to talk to Atsu. I'll, um, I'll read this out to recap for any, uh, any new viewers um, what it is that we're doing in the game. Ursu uh, sighs and says, At the time of the last conjunction or coming together of our world's three suns, the evil Skeksis gained control of the great crystal that rules our destiny. The crystal cracked and darkened, and dark it will remain until a piece that broke off, the crystal shard, is restored. There is a prophecy that the shard can be replaced only by Gelfling hand and only at the time of the next great conjunction. If this prophecy is not fulfilled, the Skeksis will grow even more powerful, and their reign will last forever. Jen, to you has fallen the task of healing the crystal, it is time for your quest to begin, for very soon the three sons will once again be joined in a great conjunction. You must find Orgra, keeper of secrets, and the watcher of the heavens. She may have said she may have the shard you seek. Gelfling, I leave you with this final puzzle. What do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Find the answer to this mystery and present it to Orgra. 
Only then can you gain entrance to her observatory. And now, Gelfling, our roads must curve apart. We may meet in another life, but not again in this one. With these words, Ursu dies, and his lifeless body vanishes from the sleep frame. There we go. Um, so that's that's the setup. So we've missed. Um, sorry, we've completed the timed portion of this event, so we can actually carry on with our adventure. Although I guess the only thing that we need from Ursu is information technically unless it sets sort of an invisible uh, flag within the game so we're gonna go back the way we came if you're thinking that this um, uh, circle of standing stones and the long shadows uh, looks quite portentous you would be right we're gonna come back there shortly but first we need to go off in this direction to get um, one item uh, one environmental item so Jen is standing on a mountainside covered with loose and extremely sharp shale. So we can get shale here. So that's something I did work out first time round. But there was something crucial that I've been missing. So I, um, after last week's stream, um, I did have a quick Google to see what sort of walkthroughs were available. And just in the preview text, uh, in one of the search entries, um, because the um, the walkthroughs for this tend to be quite um, quite to the point. Um, it quickly revealed to me that I'd missed something in this starting area, which once you leave, you can't return to. Um, so that's why we start again. So let's um, look at this area again. So Jin is in the Valley of the Stones, so named for the circular formations of standing stones that lie within it. Um, look, shadow! Jen notices that the shadows cast by the standing stones seem to point north into the hills toward a distant tree. Jen is in the valley of the stones. So I thought this was the game just pointing us in the, the right direction uh, of where to go next. We got to this tree, and this tree is quite interesting. So Jen is making his way along a shadowy path that snakes through the hills above the valley of the stones. Um, so the room description doesn't mention anything about the tree, but we can look at the tree. The tree is nice, but that is all. So I think that's as far as I got, and I thought, well, okay, let's just go north, and then you tumble down into the wilderness, um, and there are lots of uh, things to do there. Uh, and that's what I did. But um, looking at the tree is not enough. You need to look at the path. The shadows cast by the sending stones in the valley below seem to point at the ground beneath a tree that borders the path. So I think only by looking at the shadows, let's just set it out, or the path, do you get a hint that there is something to do at the base of the tree. Yeah, same description. So if you're lucky enough to think of uh, that thing to ask the game, um, and then uh, I suppose cogent enough to think that you could dig, you get this. Using the shale, Jen digs in the ground. So presumably if you didn't have the shale, it would say, uh, what would you dig with, I guess? Jen digs in the ground at the base of the tree and uncovers a strange looking flute. Okay, so then we need to get the flute. It's gonna be a bit dirty, isn't it? But then, we, yeah, and we're gonna look at the flute for illustrative purposes. The flute is odd in that it has two pipes instead of the usual one. And what you can do, and this is quite delightful, is you can play the flute. There you go, so hopefully you heard that. Issue a strange two-tone chord. It was it was just two individual tones, but I'll, I'll let the game get away with it. It's an apple too. Um, yeah, so uh, I was thinking somewhat along, along these lines, because music is quite important. Um, in the religion of the mystics and in uh, Jen's background in the film um, and I was curious that it wasn't something that um, had happened in the game, it didn't seem to be part of his background so it's something you discover it's not part of uh, Jen's previous life um, which is interesting it's hidden in a really weird place um, and there's only well, there's a couple of ways to get a clue that you need to look at the base of the tree, and unfortunately looking at the tree, the focal point, is is not it. So I think, had I been designing it, I would have uh, 
done something to suggest that maybe the uh, the base of the tree is worth looking at from the description of the tree as well. Um, but I believe that's all we need to do in this area. So we'll head north, and I'll need to change my map over. Yeah. So um, previously we had explored this area which is quite vast to be honest so we start here and it goes all the way north uh, to the far extremes of this forest um, before it's blocked and it goes all the way um, west to where there's a, uh, an impassable chasm and then it goes all the way east to where the forest is both too dense and where there's a, um, a river that obstructs our progress so we've been through all this area. There's quite a few things that we found to do. I don't know how many of them are necessary. Um, because I um, once I got the flute, I thought, well, maybe that's a way that we can get past the crystal bat. Because um, seemingly at random in this area, a crystal bat will come along. Um, you can't do anything to um, strike it from the sky or catch it, as far as I'm aware. Um, it stays there for about three inputs, um, three um, parser entries, um, then it disappears, and then about three parser entries later, Gartham, um, the big crustaceans, uh, come and uh, drag you off, and that's the, that's the game over screen. Uh, so I thought there must be, there must be a solution to this. Um, so I went around uh, tooting the flute um, everywhere I could think of, nothing happened. Um, so I did tentatively have a look for, through the, the next few lines of a walkthrough and what you need to do is some of what we'd already done um, but crucially um, I looked at so I looked at, had a quick glance at two different walkthroughs and neither of them have any way of addressing the crystal bat it's just there and if it sees you you're done for so that immediately kind of reframes how I'm thinking about this game, as well as um, the slight pernicketiness of finding that flute. Um, so it's um, it's recontextualising the game for me uh, because uh, if the if the bat's um, an unavoidable um, and randomised element, then this is this wonderful environment is uh, is a more hostile one than. I might have thought. Okay, so this is somewhere we need to go. Jen is alone in the wilderness. Happily, there is a beautiful pond sparkling like a gem among the chattering flowers to brighten up Jen's loneliness. Croaking frog-like creatures abound on huge lily pads floating on the pond. Now, uh, chattering flowers is an odd phrase. It's not an everyday phrase. Um, so you'd think that we might be able to listen and hear something interesting. There's nothing unusual. Can we listen to the flowers? Jen listens to chattering flowers, but with them all talking at once, he can't understand what they are saying. Interesting. Mmm. Okay. Well, that's a... Um, that, oddly, I had tried it before, the listening to specific things. Let's see if we can listen to the frog. Oh. Lis listening frog? Oh, I confused myself there. Listen frog? Do you know frog? No. Listen pond? Jen doesn't see it here. Or listen water. I don't know. Um, anyway, that surprisingly is a bit of uh, is a bit of a hint actually. Um, that I wasn't expecting because I've listened generally in areas because I, uh, I think I quite quickly tumbled onto the fact that because the game was evoking the senses um, we could ask about them but um, yeah that's interesting so our mission here is to get a lily pad so we're going to cut a lily pad uh, which we did work out last time so using the sharp shell Jen cuts the lily pad away from its thick stem and takes it with him Jen is in the wilderness Great, so we've got a lily pad. Um, I did have the idea of using that as a kind of a raft or some kind of coracle 
to get across the body of water. And that wasn't a bad idea, it turns out. But the thing I didn't think about, apropos of listening to flowers, is this area. There is a babbling brook splashing through the wilderness here, chattering flowers and tall grasses line its banks. Listen to the flowers here, I wonder. Jill listens to the chattering flowers, but with them all talking at once, he can't understand what they're saying. That's fair. So, what I didn't tweak to is that babbling brook was being used in a literal sense here, and not the uh, the conventional uh, aphorism. Uh, so, let's... Uh, first of all, let's get the pebbles. I don't know if we need the pebbles. I'm going to get them anyway, because... Well, I mean... You might get in trouble for having the wrong things in your entry, but um, I'm an adventure gamer, so I'm just going to pick it all up anyway. Great, so we've got the pebbles. But what we need to do, what I'm angling at here, is we need to listen to the brook. Jen listens carefully to the babbling brook. The brook, which seems to have a slight stutter, says, eh, eh, en, n, n, nen. Uh, which, if you're thinking laterally, um, <laughs> And um, and yeah, uh, interpreting uh, it could be deemed a set of instructions as to which direction to go. Um, starting off east and then switching north, although because it blurs the two directions together slightly, um, uh, it might be a little harder to interpret. But what this is doing in the game, I found out, is that that's actually... Um, opening up a new area uh, that's off the edge here that we couldn't get to previously um, without this knowledge. So I'm going to do a little bit of prep to uh, to get some more drawing done. So I would like a uh... Oh, that's almost exactly where I would like that, thank you. So we're going to head east. Um, so, I do need to be mindful that the, the bat is an issue and could appear at any point. Um, if anything does, anything in particular does trigger it, I haven't worked out what that could be. Um, and if there is a way to avoid the bat or defeat the bat, um, that's not not known to people generally, apparently. I mean, I do kind of like the idea that it is, if well, it's, it feels fairer in gameplay terms if there is a way to um, resolve the situation as if it were a puzzle. But there's a definite storytelling effect to it um, being an unavoidable hazard um, of the environment, which um, plays into adventure, I think. So here we are. So we're on a new screen already. Um, walking on an east-west path through what seems like an endless wilderness, the sounds of the wilderness have given way to an eerie hush. Hmm. So that's interesting. All right, let's draw this in. So as long as we're not entering anything, the, the bat won't spontaneously appear, which is nice. So the my general plan for this stream is that I'll um I will follow down this route. So I I only know that there's sort of one one more thing to do uh in this direction that I know about already. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll we'll be exploring fresh territory. Um, I think I'm just gonna carry on uh, as best I can. Um, trying the things that occur to me. Um, probably for about another half an hour and then take a quick break, make a drink. Um, is that usually tends to, a little a little breather away usually tends to help with adventure gaming. Um, and when I come back we'll, we'll carry on as best we can um, and I'll dig out any extra information that I've got from uh, from last time as well. I'm going to do a little bit more researching beyond um, having a sneaky peek at a walkthrough or two. 
Yes, yeah, so if you're joining us for the first time for this one, um, I mean, it's, a, it's probably a good one to start with because we did start from the beginning of the, the game again. Um, and the, the general general uh, ethos ethos of the stream is um, is a pretty relaxed one. Um, I'm certainly happy to to hear from anybody in chat, and if you've got any um, suggestions as to things we could do, please do please do mention them. It's quite nice to. Um, Tackle adventure games socially. The more brains, the better, I say. And yeah, uh, and part of it is just me drawing in a map, in a in a tiny little window over here on my screen, um, with a mouse. Yeah, that's just that's just how we roll here. The world of Thra. So Jen is on a path in the wilderness. The plants and animals here seem strangely quiet. The path heads west and north. So I suppose actually the um, the path is uh, is telling us what we need to know here, isn't it? Uh, in that we uh, we can't continue any further east, even if we wanted to. Interesting. This is um. So this uh, I say generally speaking, the uh, the area screens conform quite well to the top of the screen being north, um, bottom south, and so on. Uh, but this one seems to be a little confused in that regard. Uh, oh, don't your hair should be like down there. Um, because it's, yeah, so Jen seems to be looking south or west. Oh, I suppose, no, I suppose that makes sense. If Jen is sort of looking back west the way he's come. And then there is kind of a the path turning north would make sense as well. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give it, I'll, um, I'll retract that statement. It, um, it does uh, it does broadly follow. Cool, that will that'll do for my purposes. But on that, it looks about sound. Right, so we want to go north here then. Oh, look at that! All sticky on his feet. Uh, Jen has arrived in a swampland. Where the ground is mucky and vines hang everywhere from enormous trees. Interesting. So, I think there is only one way to keep going here. I think there is only one way to keep going here. But I guess we can test it out, can't we? That's weird. We're in the habit of doing it. Yeah, so I think even when um, some of these screens are absolutely beautiful, some of them are just sort of um, good enough, I'd say. I'd say the consistency of the um, the drawing of Jeff, how um, expressive his uh, body language is usually, um, kind of makes up for areas of the environment where uh, perhaps 
things don't look particularly well detailed. Oh my goodness, I've botched this one. Never mind. Kind of know what's going on. Um, particularly well detailed, or um, or very sophisticated. So I'd say probably if you took Jen out of this screen, it would be a mess. But with the context of Jen, it um it works. Okay. So can I go east? Can we go west? No, I can only go north. No, that's nice, isn't it? There's a nice sense of depth there. Jen is at the southern edge of a vast swampland that extends for miles to the east and west. Looking far to the north, you can barely make out what might be the swamp's boundary. So I think I will, uh, for mapping purposes, I'll kind of call this the edge of this uh, this part of the map. I mean, we've been. So what would that up against? Oh, I guess that comes up against the. Can you see that on screen? Not quite. Let me get it for you. Um, so we came to a thick part of the forest that was very quiet. Um, we could go no further from there. So, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if we could um, sort of unlock that as a uh, as a shortcut back? That would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. So I'm getting ahead of myself thought wise there. Um, let's just do this. Draw this one in. Okay, yeah, that's got the spirit of that screen, does it? All right, so this is our um, our puzzle point, really, before we head off onto um, a new map. Uh, I'll just get a little bit ready for that. So let's take a uh, one of these out. So, um, for this one, we do want to go north. We said north. This one looks deep and dangerous. It appears suicidal for Jen to attempt a crossing. Wow, that's, um, that's quite a term to use in, in a game for, uh, for all ages. Um, so, yeah, so what we need to do here is use the lily pad. As I thought, maybe on the river. Floating atop the pad he cut from the water lily. Jen paddles north until he reaches a shallow portion of the swamp. As he gets off the pad, however, he floats. He forgets to grab hold of it, and it floats away, hopelessly out of reach. Jen is trudging through the northern edge of a vast swampland. Vines dangling from the huge trees hamper his every step. Uh-oh. To his horror, Jen sees a crystal bat hovering overhead. His crystal eye is staring directly at him. Interesting. Okay, let's get a new. Let's get a new uh, map sorted out here. So yeah, so as far as I'm aware, this is a new area, and uh, I'm not quite sure um, what it's gonna, how big it's gonna be, uh, or what we're gonna encounter here. Um, but first, we've got to see if we can evade the clutches of the crystal bat.
Okay, so we kind of came into that from the um, south, I suppose. Alright, where do we want to go? Because um, I think, if anything, the only thing we can do is try and outrun the map. So, are we going... I guess we're going north, because that's kind of continuing in the same direction, isn't it? Jenna's wandering through a murky swampland. No bath, that's interesting, because in the other areas, the uh, when the bat appeared, it followed from screen to screen. So we might be alright, if we're lucky. So maybe getting to this point is is kind of a deactivation? I don't know. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? So we're wading through a murky swamp plan. The trees are draped with vines and slime covers everything. Can I get slime? <laughs> okay. Why in the name of all we Jen want to do such a thing? Uh, look, swamp. Swamp gets deeper towards the north. Okay, so that's probably a suggestion that we shouldn't go north, is what I'm going to infer from that. Um, maybe look, trees, look, vines, vine thing everywhere. Can I get a vine? It's not Tarzan. Can I cut a vine? No, the game definitely doesn't want me to have a vine. So, um, yeah, so you'll note if you've um, watched uh, either of the previous streams that there are quite a few things that we could have done and some things we could have picked up uh, in the other area that we haven't done. Um, but I don't think they're necessary. They might not be necessary at all. Um, and they certainly not shouldn't be necessary to do this part of the game, whatever this is. So I'm assuming this is what's going to get us to Orgra on a mountain top. Um, because I did reread the the manual um, since last week. And um, in the the manual, in the backstory, which is written uh, in the character of Orgra, um, she specifically says that her um, her habitation is on a mountain top, so we do know that sort of geographical uh, information. And it did. I was wondering last time actually if it me uh, mentioned Kira, because I thought it had, and it does at one point, but it didn't really say anything particularly um, helpful. I think in the situation we're in, as regards. Uh, Yeah, that's fine. So I'm not going to go north, so east or west, what should we try? Do you want to go uh, west? I feel like west is an interesting one to head for. Oh, sinking to his waist, Jen has become hopelessly mired in a boggy section of the Great Swamp. With each passing moment, he slips further into the all-consuming muck. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. Um, I feel like we need help, um, so I'm going to attempt, attempt a few things after drawing the screen. So this might be one that we don't want to go to, is what I'm thinking. Um, I really like the uh, the dynamics in this image as well. It's effective. Um, the uh, the orange and blue contrast is used really well in various places in the graphics here. I guess it's quite handy that um, <laughs> the girlflings only have uh, three fingers and a thumb. Um, certainly easy to draw with a, uh, either either a mouse or um, a, uh, a low number of, uh, of Apple II characters. 
fab. There are some vines I can see. They feel like they might be useful. Uh, but the first thing I want to try really is um you know I'll uh, add a few more annotations first. So I didn't put the direction on to this one, so this is west and this is stuck. So probably don't want to go here, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I'm gonna play the flu. Uh, see what happens. But which is a strange two-tone chord. Gen is mired in a bog. Um, uh, grab vine. Can't reach one from here. Um, what if I go look? Bog. Jen looks around desperately for something to grab onto. He sees nothing that will help it help him pull himself out of the bog. That doesn't sound great, does it? Um, what else have we got? A piece of shout out to the a strange looking flute. Yeah, we haven't got a lot anymore, have we? We lost the loo pad, which could have provided some surface area. Um, hmm. Can I head back east? Can't, he's stuck in the muck. Jen is mired in the bog. Um, shout. Jen receives no response. Stuck for all eternity in the bog, Jen fails to fulfill the ancient prophecy that a gelfling would restore the dark crystal to its former brilliance and banish evil from the world. Ooh, another game over. Interesting. I think that's. There doesn't seem to be. So, um, yeah, so just in this short section of um, returning to the game, the uh, the world seems a lot less uh, hospitable than it did at first glance, which is interesting. Um, and whether that's an intentional um, design choice or not, I think it I think it's really interesting. Um, so we're back at the start of the game. I'm gonna restore a game because I did uh, save make a save at the point where we've got um, the things from the start here so where we've got the shale and the what's the word I'm looking for? the flute okay so if I s this should be the right arrangement of discs to get us there fab I think we could stay on 1B for this um, this swamp, can't we? Maybe that's why uh, you had to change discs so abruptly in the same continuous area because you weren't supposed to go there? Which seems odd to me because um, just travelling around as far as you can seems more obvious than talking to a babbling brook. But what do I know? So yeah, so if we check our inventory we should have shale and fleet. Great. So there aren't too many commands to enter to get back to where we were. So I'll just do that quickly. Um, and I guess we can see if the um, the crystal bat appears at the same point, because that might be um, an intentionally uh, triggered event, possibly. Or it could just be a coincidence, um, uh, like some of the other times when it appeared. Uh, I think it's really had two, two words. Well, they're normally things this game doesn't recognise. Uh, an input of three words. So I wonder if lily pad with a space in it has been programmed as one, one word. That's possible. Um, so I think we need to talk to the brook um, to get the clue, and I don't think the path is visible until then. So that's something we need to remember to do. Um, but simply, the information is not enough. I think I can remember this uh, well enough without. Um, without having to refer to that. That's what I meant to say there. I guess I didn't check from here whether you can go east or west, but I presume not. Or oh, M, so it's. An upside down W. Um, yeah, just north. Cool. 
yeah, so we know that um, it's funneling us in this direction, which makes sense um, map-wise and narrative-wise. Okay, so we're on the other side, and we get quite a lot of description. And yeah, once again, a crystal bat. Interesting. Hmm. Um, can we go north? Because then the crystal bat doesn't seem to follow. So, although it told us that north the swamp gets uh, deeper, um, west was definitely not the way to go. So let's try east. Cover the. Oh! Genesis. Oh, that's sh uh, shockingly minimalist, isn't it? I enjoy that. Genesis is an eerie swampland. Vines have come down from the trees and wrapped themselves around him. The vines will not let go of Jen as he struggles to free himself. Ooh. Well, I'm going to draw this. I, I really like this screen. Um, and this is um, much like the film. So if I take my... We did this on a mountainside when he gets snaggled up with vines. But if I take the event to be the same, then this is when he meets Augur as well. Uh, which sort of pops up. Um, but that, it, that may not be the case here. This might just be another environmental hazard. Oh, when I overshot there. There. Oh, you can't see it fully, but I think uh, if you can see that with any clarity, that's got some of the energy of this screen. Um, so let's play the flute. Jen can't, the vines are binding him too tightly. Um, shout! Oh, uh, call help. Jen shouts, help! Unfortunately, his call is not answered. Nice, thanks, game. Um, uh, can I cut vines? Oh, Jenkins seven no vine before it's time. Oh, oh, that's why there was. Oh, that's why there was that um, that green space. This is beautiful. I love this. Jenkins seven no vine before it's time. Looking out from his vine prison, Jen finds himself returning the gaze of a single eyeball thrust up among the tendrils by a withered hand. Look, eyeball. Hand holding the eye belongs to a strange and terrifying being. I am Orgra, says the being, keeper of secrets and watcher of the heavens. Uh, talk, Orgra. Orgra says, Gelfling, you know answer to riddle, huh? Oh no. How do I? How am I supposed to know the answer to the riddle? What was the riddle? I had it written down, didn't I? I seem to recall. All right, bear with me a second. Uh, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to do this a second. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay. So, back when we were in the first area, we spoke to... Uh, what do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Um, what do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Um, what, who are the Sun Brothers? How would I know the answer to this? What do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? 
So this is kind of world world related, isn't it? Um, because there are three three suns, I believe, in this world. Um, this is kind of an in-universe riddle. Um, well, I I let's answer truthfully. I don't know the answer to riddle. Too bad. Jen will never get free from the vines. The Gelfling, therefore, is unable to complete the quest for which Destiny has chosen him, and the world of the crystal is condemned to remain under the spell of evil throughout all eternity. Wow, so you get one chance. You get... Okay. Um... Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is... Uh... How do we know? Where would we find that information? Look, suns. Unless I want to see if I can look at the suns. I'll look. Look at the suns. Oh! <gasps> Amazing! I did not know you could do this! Why didn't I think to do this? The three suns are drawing ever closer together. Oh, and that'll probably change as we get to different parts of the game. That's exciting. Okay, well, I'm excited myself, but I still don't have an answer. Um, I'm going to get back to our swampy place, the, um, the middle screen of the swamp, which seems to be a fairly safe one, away from crystal bats and vines and bogs. And um, let's see if we can go north. I suspect we it's either another deadly trap, or uh, we just aren't allowed to go there. I suspect the only way to progress is to meet Orgret and answer the riddle correctly. Hmm. So, as the player, are we supposed to find some information in game that clues us up to this? Because I just thought if there was some kind of ancient riddle then we might find something about that in the ruins or the Posling village or something like that. Um, let's look at the suns in this, uh, this save. Yeah. Three suns are drawing ever closer together. Amazing. Okay. Going north. Okay, so we'll just repeat our actions um, quickly, which uh, shouldn't be too much hassle. Oh, cut shell. Cut lily pad with shale is what I was thinking, but um, I typed the wrong part of that thought. Um, yeah, so uh, I have thought at various points, um, it's interesting how these early adventure games where um, you're, I think you're expected to try and fail um, and try again, um, it's a recursive aspect that makes me think of um, how the cycles of dark, things like Dark Souls work, um, but here you're doing it with kind of you're not trying to improve your own skills necessarily so much as uh, intuit um, what uh, a designer in, a, in an office somewhere was uh, was thinking in 
Yes, there we go. Okay, just had to sort out my map a little there. Um, we're at the stage where we go north. And then north. And then we need to. Uh, let's go that. Find this. There we go. Phew. Okay. Um, and use the. Oh, sorry. Use the lily pad. Avoid the crystal bat by heading north. Can we go north? Swamp is gets deeper towards the north. Okay, so I think this is yeah, this is a closed system, isn't it? Closed ecosystem. Alright, so we can't go off that way, we can't go off that way. Um Yeah, so I think it's just talk to Augra, know the solution, and uh, get out of trouble that way. Well, you know what? I haven't tried doubling back, have I? Is the crystal bat still there hanging around? It is! That's interesting. Well, let's just hang around here for a sec. Ah, oh, yeah, so you can't go east or west. That's fine. You can only. You can't go south. Oh, uh, yeah, swamp is too. Uh... So I. Oh, the. Oh, uh, look. Oh, the bat's not doing anything, is it? Quick nap, Jenk nap, the bat flies away. There's this one cat. Oh. But it hasn't disappeared off the screen, that's a bit weird. Alright, so if I've got time to go east before the garden, yeah, I'm probably still alright. Okay, well I'm going to leave um, Jen and you, the audience, in suspense while I take that quick little break and um, make myself a hot drink. Um, I'll be back in about five minutes I'd say and um, uh, we'll try and work out what the Sun Brothers were all about. If anybody out there watching, if anybody is watching and you have an idea what the Sun Brothers are liable to quarrel, quarrel about Pop those, pop those suggestions in chat. I'd love to hear them. Thank you. All right, back in a minute. Hello, I'm back. I've got a cup of tea and some dates to eat. Um, I had a couple of thoughts while I've been away from the uh, the computer. Let's pop us back here. Uh, first of all, I think if the game will let me, I'm going to save in a different slot. Um, because that would be, oh, oh, uh, that's okay, thank you for giving my mistake, um, B, please, um, because I think it would be good to return to this point and be able to try a few different answers for Olga without having to go through the rest of the events to get there, um, because I think we I think we'll be alright to continue from this point. Um, and yeah, I, I think I think this would be fine. There you go. Okay, second thought was that um, the likelihood of the answer to the riddle, or something from which you could infer the answer, being in the game itself, is probably quite low, given that we've I think we've done a good job of exploring. Um, all the environments available to us thus far. So my thought is that we probably need to read the manual again, as that's um, quite detailed in some respects in terms of the world of the Dark Crystal. Um, so rather than me uh, uh, stopping the stream earlier or anything and, and going off and pondering things, I thought we might have a go at reading out that portion of the manual. Um, on stream, which is not really conducive to me drinking the tea and eating my dates, but um, I don't mind. We're doing a little bursts, um, and 
I will pause when I need to. I think that will work. Of course, the alternative is that I could go uh, to a walkthrough and look up the answer, but I feel pretty confident that the walkthrough will just tell you what to type in without any explanation of why that's the correct answer or how you might have arrived there which is it's kind of what I want to know really so if we can if we can get there ourselves um, I think I'd find that a lot more a lot more satisfying so let's give it a go alright so the beginning of the dark crystal manual um, it starts off first person I am Augra, keeper of the crystal shards watcher of the universe teller of a prophecy only you can fulfill and fulfill you will with luck, courage, skill, and logic. Uh, yeah, I guess we've uh, used some of all those things. For you're entering the world of the Dark Crystal. Copyright Jim Henson Productions Incorporated. When you begin our high-res adventure game, you will become Jen, hero of the Dark Crystal. You must find and restore a shard to its rightful place in the crystal before the great conjunction of the three suns. Fail and the world is doomed to live forever under the rule of the ruthless Skeksis. The Dark Crystal, as are all our high res adventure games, is a fantasy game in which you wander through a make believe land. A computer becomes your hands and feet, eyes and ears. It's a strange thought. To achieve your goal, healing the crystal, that's in inverted commas, you must overcome obstacles that stand in your way and solve a series of puzzles. Yeah, I don't know it. Now, ready yourself, Jen. Your journey is about to begin. Alright, so I don't think anything in there had anything particularly relevant to say about. The uh, the sun, the sun. Sorry. Uh, so then, next heading is beginning the game. In the meantime, Jen, I will spin a tale. In my tale, it is my tale. But within, you will learn how everything that is came to be. Read closely, Jen, for many clues are contained within. Of the race Augra, I, Augra, am the first and last. This is my song. And the next section is Augra's song. I'm going to pause to. Uh, drink for a second. Okay, Augur's song. I lay on the mountain above the crystal and saw the three suns move close together. I lay under the rocks with one eye open to the light and for one moment I saw the joint splendour of the three suns shining down on me. From that light my eye, open eye became blinded and in that moment of light the Erskex opened the door in the crystal and entered our world. The Erskex found me there upon the mountaintop they healed my burns. When I was healed, they built for me the great observatory that I might see all the parts of the world. In the days of their first coming, the Erskex were full of vigour to change and build. They hollowed out the mountain around the crystal and built a castle of lesser crystals around the great crystal. Oh, okay. And above the crystal they made a three great three-sided portal. So when the suns moved over the crystal, they stood framed in the portal a triangle surrounding the circle. The Erskex shone with an inner light of beauty that streamed from them always. I shared with them my knowledge of the world, and the Erskex listened to me. I showed them the beauty of the crystal when the light of the suns together shone upon it. I taught them that one thousand years would pass before the ne great, next great conjunction, when the three suns would once again combine to wake the crystal to full beauty. I told them how, at the time of the Great Conjunction, the song of the crystal would once again resound through the rocks, and how all life would rejoice. In return, the Erskex taught me there is power in the universe that is there to be used by those who dare to control and shape their destiny. Still, they would never reveal the history of their past or their thoughts for the future, but I learned more than they thought I knew. I learned that in the hearts of the shining Erskex, there struggled two, being, two beings living with them one body, and all of them all... Oh, I think a line might be missing from this, um, this reprint. Uh, it's, it says, uh, and, but then cuts off. There's a picture of Orgra, um, which is very nice. Um, but then it jumps to, all them all things were divided so. Light and dark were, for them, the opposing spirits of the universe. And I came to know that the Erskex had left their former world to follow a grand design that their fellow Erskex thought a dangerous folly. 
They had come to our planet to capture and use the power of the Great Crystal. They had come during one great conjunction to use the next. 1,000 years later, to achieve their work. In the heart of the castle they made a net of crystal and golden mirrors that would catch the light that passed through the Great Crystal and direct it into the Chamber of Light. Finally, the moment of the Great Conjunction came and the three suns shone down as one upon the crystal, sending a blinding beam of trapped light through the chamber. Then, one by one, in a long procession, the Erskex walked into its brightness. They entered the bright light each as a single being, but as they left the path of light, each had become two, to the left the Skexes, to the right the Mystics. The great division of the Erskex had been achieved. On that day the harmony of the world shattered. Harmony of the word shattered, it might be a typo. The Skeksis woke from the shock of division, full of violence and anger. They stormed into the crystal chamber, staggering under the stain. Strain? I think there's quite a few typos in this, unfortunately. Uh, strain of their new bodies, grasping each other to keep from... Oh, God, this could be the stain of their new bodies, um, if it's being more lyrical. Um, keep each other from falling, yet hating each other's touch. There was a loud argument, blows were struck, and one blow hit the crystal. A shard broke from the crystal and flew up the shaft, out onto the mountainside, and the light left the crystal. Now from the crystal there came no more songs. The sun shone as before, but dimmer. The trees grew as before, but twisted. Strange beasts moved in the woods. The Skeksis seized control of the castle. The mystics fled when the harmony was broken. They were filled with sadness, and they made their way to the Valley of Stones. In that mist-filled valley where water flowed from abundant springs and caves dotted the rocky slopes, the peaceful and gentle mystics built stone circles of power, hoping thus to find protection against the growing evil of the Skeksis. From the mystics, I learned what the great design of the Erskex had been. They had hoped that by submitting themselves to the light of the crystal, they would purify their divided selves, everything in them that was less than perfect would be burned away. They had not understood the balance of their souls. They thought that there could be light without darkness, stillness without motion. But instead of perfection, they had achieved division. Dark from light, force from virtue, Skeksis from mystic. Unlike the mystics, the Skeksis felt no grief, for in the castle they reigned in glory. The darkness of the crystal seemed to them an eternal refreshment. And in their first days, they still shone with a fire that could deceive the eye. Their speech was still like music, and they knew best of all the art of flattery. Many Gelfling fell to their lures. The Gelfling were earth and spirit, master of song and shaping. They carved wood and stone to set free the shapes that lay hidden in them. They moulded metal to rejoice in its new form. Before the darkness, the rocks sang to me, and I shared their song with the Gelfling. But then the Skeksis stole the Gelfling with force and fear. For from the castle and the dark for, for from the castle and the darkened crystal within it, they spread out evil like a cloud, power that no longer led to harmony. Only in the protected valley was there peace, and among the quiet plants of the pod people. Like the Gelfling, these did not foresee the evils they would suffer from. They tended all things that grew, above all the great pod plants in whose vast seed pods they made their villages. There they thought only of laughter, food and music. Their music stayed simple and unchanged, alas, the only joy left in our suffering world. When the Skeksis began to take Gelfling as well as pod people as slaves, the Gelfling were dismayed, for once they took thought of the uh, second page, future. They sought to know if the crystal might be healed and if the Skeksis' rule must continue. They lit the fires of prophecy, they took counsel from the flames. Seven circles of seven Gelfling lay on the hilltops all night, their faces to the stars. The dreams were made stone, the wall of destiny still stands. It's quite bleak. Uh, their Gelfling were shown the crest for the lost shard, and they were shown the healing of the crystal by the hand of a Gelfling, replacing the shard by the light of a great conjunction. And there too they were shown the ruin of the Gelfling, the fall of their houses. And the wall stood for all to see. The Skeksis too saw the wall, and they cruelly resolved to foil the prophecy. 
Their first thought was to confuse the search for the true shard. They made fragments of artificial crystal without the higher virtues of the great original, but not easily distinguished in appearance. Of their artificial crystal, they made three copies and scattered them on the slopes of the mountain beneath the castle, near where the shard had fallen, so that the Gelfling would not know which to place in the wound in the crystal. That sounds like a queue up for a, a puzzle to come. Okay, perhaps not the puzzle I was thinking of, because the next bit says, The Gelfling found all four and brought them to me, hoping one was the true shard, but no effort of mine could make it reveal itself. And the Skeksis made the Gartham from the memory of sea creatures in their first world. I like that idea. The strength of the Gartham was almost unbelievable, their stupidity incalculable. Their sole purpose was to destroy all they found. The Gelfling understood this and lived in fear of them. <gasps> oh, I just had a thought. The um, the crystal bat that seems to appear every time we get to that one screen just before the um, we get to the middle of the swamp. Uh, I think that's um, for plot reasons. Because the if the game follows the plot of this, the film, then the Gartham will turn up in uh, the observatory and drive us from there. Um, so it might just be there for plot reasons rather than uh, to uh, to game over us. Thank you. Um, so the Gelfling understood this and lived in fear of them. The pod people never understood, never realised the Gartham had any connection with the castle from which no pod slaves returned to tell their story. As soon as the Gartham appeared, the creatures of the world turned against them. Foremost among the enemies of the Gartham were the land striders. The destruction of the Gartham became their fiercest joy. Their speed, their slashing blows, would leave a Gartham crippled before it knew it had been attacked. But not even the land striders could prevail against the great multitudes of Gartham, and the Skeksis bred crystal bats to carry lenses of artificial crystal. The bats sent images of all they saw back to the crystal in the Skeksis castle. Now that the Skeksis had all-seeing crystal eyes with which to direct the Gartham, they set about to putting an end to the Gelfling. When at last they thought they had succeeded, they rejoiced in the death of the last Gelfling, and of the prophecy. Unbeknownst to the Skeksis, Two Gelfling, and two Gelfling alone, survived the slaughter. Jen was found and fostered by the mystics, and Kira by the pod people. Jen was brought up with riddles and enchantments, music and dreams. Ursu, the master, wisest of the mystics, placed him under the protection of spirals of power so that he might be fit to restore the shard. Ursu knew that whatever, where, whenever a mystic died in the valley, a Skeksis died in the castle for their bodies were divided but their souls were still linked. Thus when the Great Conjunction at last grew near, the Master allowed himself to die, knowing that this would also mean the death of Skekso, the Emperor of the Skeksis, and that the Skeksis must fall into utter division. And indeed, with Skekso dead, the rivalries concealed for fear of his power broke out at once. Skek Ung, the Garthen Master, and Skek Sil, the Chamberlain, fell into open quarrel. Chamberlain lost the struggle, fled from the castle and turned his mind to his last betrayal. Ah, so maybe this is the way that the um, the game will fill us in on events that are happening um, away from Jen. While the Skeksis four, the mystics chanted and prayed. I heard the death chant for Ursu. In its echoes, I first saw Jen. He had been shown a dream image of the crystal shard and told to find me, Orgra, on my mountain. The mystics, in their wisdom, told him no more, but sent him on his quest. I, in my foolishness, thought it folly. And then, commanding your computer is the section that follows, concludes the uh, the manual for the game. Um, and that's what we read on our first stream. Um, does that seem more relevant at the time? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't think there was much of a hint there as to what the Sun Brothers quarrel over. So if we assume the Sun Brothers are the suns in the sky, uh, the three suns, so three brothers, should we see if we can look at them from here? Oh! The three suns are drawing ever closer together. Interesting, so that might be like a progress marker that we can um, we can look at. Unless there is uh, some kind of timer running in the background as well, so you need to complete the game in a certain number of turns. That'd be interesting. Uh, 
Okay, let's go for it. Jen shouts help, but unfortunately his call is not answered. Oh, uh, oh I like just looking at the inventory triggered that, so I think it's just um, after a certain number of turns, isn't it? Looking out from his vine prison, Jen finds himself returning the gaze of a single eyeball thrust up among the tendrils by a withered hand. Hmm. What if I look at the hand? The hand holding the eye belongs to a strange and terrifying being. I guess it covers if you look at the person, try and look at the person or the hand or the eye. This description covers it pretty well. I am all as to being. Keep up the secrets and watch out the heavens. Jen is in a swamp plant. Good. Let's talk to Augur. Augur says, Gelfling, you know answer to riddle? Hmm? I don't know the answer to the riddle. Um, the Sun Brothers, they argue about the Great Crystal. Jen doesn't know how to grate. Oh. That's interesting. What if I answer riddle? Wink. Jen will have to do that himself. Okay, so it's not just the next input you put in is the... Uh... Oh. So Baby was uh, me being funny, specifically said no, um, that triggered the game over. Um, what do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Um, we haven't found any texts or or any real cultural touchstones for the mystics other than stone circles. How about time? She doesn't know how to time. Um, how about Sun Brothers. Sun Brothers. Well, while we're thinking, um, I'm going to mute a second. Um, glug and munch for a moment and get my notebook out because I've got a few things, a few more bits of research to um, to relay uh, while we're still going. And then maybe something will have occurred in the meantime. Okay, so. Yeah, the things I want to um, to bring up was um, last stream. I was musing about the um, how good the art is for this um, and how striking I found it. So I want to have a look um, to see if I can find out who who's responsible for it. Um, so uh, according to Moby Games, so my only that's my only source uh, for these names. Um, the people listed as graphics artists for the game. Uh, Carl Potts and Michelle Pritchard um, and that's as far as I can tell their only credited video game work um, which is interesting because um, it seems um, I mean I think it must be happening all the time in, in the industry like the video game one that people um, come into it for a little while and then go out again um, especially as, uh, as a lot of the working practices seem to be rather rather dubious but I think um, especially in the early days of, um, of video games um, quite a few people would come in from drifting from other fields um, and experiment with lots of different things so you might be a programmer a composer um, an artist a designer um, variously um, on different projects um, in the same small team um, and then after a few years um, you might float off and get um, what other people would call a proper job um, so those yeah those names Carl Potts Michelle Pritchard um, people who as far as I can tell um, didn't work on any other games 
Um, one other graphic artist mentioned was Greg Rowland, so who is credited for programming and graphics of King's Quest. So that was, um, I think, effectively the next Sierra game after this, and a transformative one for them. This is a new, um, new game engine, um, AGI, um, and that was the beginning of the um, sort of th the real third-person adventure game, um, where you had a, a sprite on screen that you could. Uh, control directly with the keyboard keys, wander around, and there were um, puzzles that you could only solve with um, proximity to certain things, um, which is, yeah, a development for sure. So, Greg Rowland. But there's one more name, graphics director, um, was Jim Mahon, um, who also wasn't listed for anything else video game related that I could find. But I had an inkling that because this was a licensed game, um, maybe somebody involved would be um, from the Henson side of things. So I had a look and there's a Jim Mahon on um, IMDB who's credited uh, as being in the art department for Muppet Babies from 1984 uh, on for a bit. So I'm wondering if that's the same person and, uh, and that Jim was kind of deputised the overseeing of, uh, of a graphical consistency which would kind of makes sense really. It makes sense from a, uh, a looking after their property point of view from the Henson company um, and it would make sense as to why this um, high-res adventure in particular has such a consistent graphical style and a really consistent sense of the character design as well. Um, yeah, so to me that, that would follow. Um, so that was a ni nice little bit of information and nice if I hopefully if that information is correct to um to credit the people who who did create these lovely images that i'm enjoying so much um many years later 40 nearly 40 years later crikey nearly 40 years later but about their son brothers um son brothers jen doesn't know how to son um think riddle Riddle. Jen doesn't know how to think. Solve riddle. <laughs> Got you now, game. Jen doesn't know how to solve. Um, ask riddle. Jen will have to do that himself. Hmm. Um. If I look at Orgra at this point. Augur is extremely ugly with only one eye and horns on her head. Well, I don't think Augur is ugly. Um, if I look at the eye. Oh, you get the same uh, description from Augur. So I think you have to do the talk Augur thing. To, uh, it's nice that this um, gives you a bit of leeway to experiment um, but I assume it's, it's oh no okay this is gonna be too much room August says girlfling you know answer to riddle huh August has grown tired of waiting for a riddle to be answered so she walks away too bad Jen will never get free from the vines the girlfling therefore is unable to complete the quest for which for what destiny has chosen him the world of the crystal is condemned to remain under the spell of evil throughout all eternity would you like to play again? Sure. So, all right, what do we know about this world and this game? So there's an emphasis in the game on the natural world. There's an emphasis in the backstory on duality um, between the mystics and the Skeksis, um, light and dark. Um, so maybe they, Quarrel about the night. Hmm. Um, well, let's see if we can try these things. Here we go. I want B, and then I want to swap my disc over, and then I want to um, swap the disc over, and then we should be snared again. You know, I'm pretty sure I know what the uh, thumbnail for the uh, YouTube upload of this uh, stream is going to be. It's going to be this image. Um, okay, so 
uh, let's do some things. Look, sky. And if you see, ah, you also see the uh, suns there. Hmm. Does it know brothers? So if I look at brothers. No. Um, hmm. Look. Look. Vines are cut down from the trees and wrap themselves around him. The vines will not go of Jen as he struggles to free himself. Um, relax. Jen doesn't know how to relax. I um, I feel very much the same. I get you, Jen. I get you. Um. Hmm. Dance. Jen can't. The vines are binding him too tightly. Does that mean he can dance other times? That's an exciting prospect. We'll try that another time. Um, slip vines. Uh, grease the vines. Embrace the vines. Talk to the vines, obviously. Jen receives no response. Hmm. Sensible. Okay, so Aura's turned up. Um, look. Person. Let's try that this time. Oh, look. Well, I guess we have to look at the hand or the eye or the arm. Yeah, there you go. You think the person would be uh, something they'd program in, but clearly not. Um, okay, so look. Talk, Aubra. You know answer riddle, huh? Um, what if I type in... Yes. Tell me answer then, Gelfling. Olga starts impatiently. That's cool. Um, uh, night. Jen doesn't have to night. Ah. So if it night time? Okay, so if you say you say yes or no, if you say no, you automatically game over. Um and the night. The night. And then you get several chances to guess the correct answer. Um Eclipse. Jen doesn't know how to eclipse. Um uh, the Great Crystal. Did we try that before? The Great Crystal. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, because Jen didn't have a great. Um, I really don't know how we get there. I am. Um, hmm. I guess so. I think we'll have well have as many more guesses as this um, this round will allow us, and then it'd probably be a good time to stop the stream, I reckon, um, and have a bit of a a pause. I'll try and see what I can come up with, but I don't at the moment. I can't really think that we know of anything. That relates to the suns. The suns only really relate to conjunction. Conjunction. Jen doesn't know how to conjunct. Yeah, fair enough. Um, um Or hell. Always says Gelfling, you know what's the riddle, huh? Nice. That uh, loops back around quite nicely. Um, yes, I know the answer. Tell me the answer then, Gelfling. Olga oh, snaps impatiently. Um, the nightmares. I think that's probably too long, isn't it? Yeah. It's a uh, one, two, three. 
eight character limit uh, for a single word, I think. Yeah, because the strings have been longer than eight characters, I'm sure. Uh, Jen Khan finds it binding him too tightly. Oh no. Ogres walked away. The end. Well, she's, uh, yeah, I guess she's pretty, uh, <laughs> that is all in character for Ogre. Um, hmm. I'll say yes, we can end on the, uh, the opening screen again. Yeah, so I feel like either we've missed something, or this is one of those cases where we've been given a riddle and expected to come up with an answer on our own recognizance. But I don't feel like there's enough in there. I mean, I'm never the best at cryptic, um, cryptic riddles and crosswords and stuff anyway, but. To me, I think you need a, just a little bit more context. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to have to come up with a plan for... for, um... next stream, I think. I would really like to, um... to know what the reasoning is to get to the answer. But I don't know, I don't know if that reasoning exists. I don't know if anybody has that information or... Or what? I mean, I guess. So, worst comes to worst, we can always progress because there's a walkthrough, um, and we and that can remain a mystery. And then maybe, um, if I do a bit of research later on, that can be part of a a follow-up video, as if I, you know, work out how you're supposed to know that. Um, but I I do really want to know how you're supposed to arrive there. I mean, there are. There was mention of spirals and all sorts of things and music and riddles in the, um, the introductory text we read. And there's all this interesting stuff, uh, I've just changed the map over, in that opening segment where you're at risk of being spied by a bat. So, for example, there's the, there's the Gelfling uh, ruins, which are here. Um, which I feel like we should be able to do something with, but I've tried a fair amount of permutations and there's just kind of this blank area here. But I feel like that might be the wall that was talked about that had the prophecy on, um, because there are similarly Gelfling ruins with a uh, wall and carved with writing and images of a, uh, of a prophecy. So I feel like that might be the game's representation of that particular element. And then once we're up from it, there is a rock which when you uh, remove the moss uh, that's covering it um, reveals a, a spiral shape, but I don't. There doesn't seem to be anything we could do with the spiral or interact with it. I did try playing the flute there, um, but that didn't uh, didn't avail anything. Um, can we draw? Can we draw a spiral? Does um, Jen doesn't know how to draw. No, that's not a thing you can do. Ooh, so if you put in an uh, a command it doesn't recognize you don't get the uh, the story prompt interesting uh, dance well here we're gonna dance aren't we before Jen can act a mystic approaches and says Ursu wisest of our race is dying he is sent for you come quickly and the mystic walks away what if I look mystic at this point Mystic is nowhere to be found. Hmm. If I look enigmatic. No. Uh, let's dance then. Why in the name of Awkward Jen want to do such a thing? Oh. You disappoint me, game. Alright, we're going to leave it there for today. A little bit shorter than I planned, but that feels like a natural uh, a break point for us, I think, in gameplay terms. So thank you very much for joining me, anybody who has followed along. Um, I can see lots of names in chat. Thank you very much for joining me, uh, bots and humans alike. Uh, you're very welcome. I hope if you've watched along, you've enjoyed this um, 
this fairly informal and relaxed playthrough of the Dark Crystal. Uh, apologies, we got we got a bit stuck again uh, after not too many screens progress. But what can you do, eh? It's an old it's an old school adventure game. Um, so the um, I think the vod for last week probably has disappeared while while we've been streaming. Um, but that is available from tomorrow um, on my YouTube channel, so Cat Sequences on YouTube. And that's also a place where you can find uh, VODs of previous streams and Let's Play series, uh, such as Divine Divinity, um, and The Feeble Files for my sins, and um, currently, uh, hopefully, getting towards the end of Portal, not the, not the puzzle. Uh, game, uh, but uh, 1986 uh, computer novel, which is an interesting experience, but a lot of reading. Uh, so you can go over there for all that stuff, um, and you can follow along on YouTube and, and Twitch. If you follow on Twitch, you'll be notified of when I next go live. My plan is to be here same time next week with more Dark Crystal, and we'll, we'll see what progress we can make. So, yeah, once again, thank you very much for joining me. Um, take care, hope you have a good week, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.